Well, we're here in the uh, chemistry lab of Irv Epstein at Brandeis University. And uh, we're going to see two demonstrations, one about oscillating chemical reactions and another about pattern formation in a chemical system. So Irv, could you uh, first tell us a little about this reaction that we're going to see uh, in the beaker? Yeah, th this reaction is known as the Briggs-Rauscher reaction, and it was developed in 1973 by two high school teachers in San Francisco. They were looking for a visually impressive oscillating reaction that was a little easier to run uh, than either uh, the belisov jabotinsky or the Bray reactions, which were the two oscillating reactions that were known at that time. Both of the earlier reactions had been discovered accidentally. So in a sense, the uh, bridge rauscher reaction, which is a hybrid of the other two reactions, is the first deliberately designed oscillating chemical reaction. So let me show you how it works. So I'm going to mix solutions of three chemicals. The first one is potassium iodate. Second is hydrogen peroxide. And the third is a mixture of manganese sulfate, malonic acid, and a little bit of soluble starch that serves as an indicator. Well, so we already see it became yellow. Yeah, the yellow is a uh, little bit of the triiodide complex. Uh, but what we'll see is that it forms a stronger complex with the starch that should turn in deep blue. And there it is. Mm, beautiful. And we should now begin to see some color changes. <laughs> Well, it really had a dramatic transition to blue, but uh, slower fade. Yeah, what we'll see in this system is that the amount of time that it spends in the blue state will gradually increase until eventually it will get stuck in the blue state or reach thermodynamic equilibrium. In uh, a true periodic oscillator, we would have to have an open system, that is, we would have to flow chemicals continuously in and out. Since this is a closed system, the second law of thermodynamics requires that it come to equilibrium eventually. Mm -hmm. And so the period will gradually lengthen, and as I say, eventually it will recover back mm -hmm. into the yellow state. What exactly are the two states? Do we have two compounds? Uh, what accounts for the uh, One is essentially an oxidized state, and one is essentially a reduced oh. state. This is a redox reaction. Oh. And so we're seeing periodic uh, waves of oxidation and reduction. And the bubbles at the top uh, are bubbles of oxygen that are produced when the hydrogen peroxide decomposes to oxygen and water. And that reaction provides the thermodynamic driving force for the system. Uh, also, what if we turned off the stirrer? Well, we can try that. And I think we'll just see more uh, of a spatial effect. That is, the, the color change uh, will not occur simultaneously all over the beaker, but should spread from one or two points to others. I hope I haven't made trouble with that request. We may have uh, <laughs> let the system get too close to equilibrium yeah. before we turned off the star. Right. It was going to die a natural death. <laughs> Oh, 
looks yeah. good. Uh -huh. And then as you can see, uh, little, little bits of purple and then oh, yeah. it seemed to come from the, the top, top and bottom. bottom. Yeah. 